Hi there, guys. I'm Chris Bowden with the Geek Group, and we are wrapping up the Project Kevin Equipment Autopsy series. And there, there's some parts that we didn't get to show you guys in the videos because in order to move the robot back to the set, we had to take the head off, and that's axes four, five, and six. And it's pretty much this unit on the end of the arm, and it's just packed with all kinds of neat stuff. So I want to take a minute and show you guys some of that. So here's where the arm connects to the robot, and you can see the concentric shafts. We've got this does, I'm pretty sure it's axis six, and this is five, and four turns here, so you don't see four down on this piece. So we've got that, and inside that, this is really cool, we've got this, which is just a beautiful bit of engineering. Now it's basic bearing on the back, and there's a big roller bearing around it with the tooth spline, and inside it, a really beautiful bearing, you can see the, the ball bearing, the race of the ball bearing. The race is the part that holds the actual balls. That's called the race. And then there's this beautiful helical bevel gear. And this is a friction drive. You probably won't see it very well in the video, but if you watch close, I'm holding this still, and as I turn this gear, this gets fatter. Like, if I squeeze it, it comes back to a spot. It wants to be right there. That's the skinny part. But see how that moves? Look right, watch right here, you'll see it move. See it? It gets fatter and skinnier. This, in the middle, is not a circle, it's, it's a little bit of an ellipse, so kind of like an oval. And, yeah, that's just, oh yeah, you can see it pretty good there. You can see it's not, it's not perfectly circular. So that's how they drive this, is with a friction drive. So we're going to do a whole thing on that later, I want to play with that. So we'll set that aside. Now what else did we get? This is another friction drive, but the grease on it's really stiff, so I can't turn it very well. But you can see that it's the six axis shaft, which is the little shaft down the middle, goes right through that. So we got that. This is one of the drive cogs on the back. It's a pulley with a belt that has teeth in it so that it maintains its position relative to the belt because it's very important that as the motor of the robot turns, it knows where that motor is, so the, this keeps everything aligned. If it was smooth, the belt could slip a little, and the motor would lose its position, and that would mess up the mastering. So what else we got? We... Eclipse. Well, circlips. We're not going to talk about that. We got some really interesting. Here's a piece of metal. I think that might fit there. Yep, that's the, the spline part for the friction drive. So we've got both of those, and I'll keep those together because that'll be a neat thing. We've got lots and lots of gears. Now we've got the cogged pulleys that go, this came off the motor shaft that drove that. We've got another cogged pulley there. I hate those things. Now these are helical cut bevel gears in a couple different sizes. These two look like they might mesh. Yes, they do. And when you need to transmit power through gears on an angle, when, when you see them cut on a 45, these gears sit like this. And they're just, it's, it's a beautiful bit of workmanship to make these. It's really neat to see how they make gears. The process of making gears is called hobbing, H-O-B. Uh, and the tool they use to cut gears is called a gear hob. And we're going to do a video on that in our machine shop series on making a gears, because we can actually make these on our milling machine now. So that's pretty cool. Those are neat. What else we got? We've got a big ring. This is just a seal. I don't need to keep that. Right, what? We, we got stuff in the bucket. We've got various bits of metal. A plate. I should keep that. That could be made into something. An internally splined shaft. Now, this isn't a spline for a friction drive. This is a spline for just a drive system. It's just a gear. This is an idler pulley. Now, in for, I want to say, axis six, that and that mounted inside the head unit in here. Uh, there's a plate on this side. And this sits off to the side, and you can adjust this in and out. And you'll see this on your car. This is a pretty common thing to see where you'll have two pulleys on a belt and a third one 
that just spins on a bearing. This is called the idler. And what this does is by pushing this away, the, the belt runs around all three, and this is how you adjust the tension on the belt so that you can have these mounted. You bring this in, and you can put the belt on, and then moving this out tightens the belt. That way you don't have to move these two. You move the third one, and that's your idler. So that does that. We have a race out of a ball bearing. Now this bearing was a thrust bearing, and you can tell because if you look at the bearing here, the balls don't actually come all the way out to the outside. The balls are mounted internally. So this bearing is designed to work kind of like a, a Lazy Susan carousel where it sits flat and it spins between two heavy things moving like that. So that's called a thrust bearing. You'll find these a lot in power drills. It's the bearing that you use because in a power drill you have to lean on it. So it's designed to take the push in and that's what that kind of bearing is used for a lot. A triangly plate. A round seal plate. You can tell it's a seal plate because it's got the rubber gasket on it right there. So. This is the cover on the side. We'll keep this. This, this will get cleaned up and go on the wall. Um, but this is the cover that went over here, and th that's where the idler pulleys and stuff were hidden under. What else we got? Lots of nuts and bolts. This is the quick change connector that went on. Th this is the last part of the robot, the actual end effector on the arm. And you can see there's pins where they would clip on various things and mount it on there. So that's the connector for that. Covers, these were the covers on the, the sides down here. These covers went on there. Anything else interesting in there? No, I mean, a gasket thing. Oh, here's a neat one. This, now remember this because you'll see these on the new robots too. It's got some goop on it, but it's, it's a, a little rectangular plate with two inset bolts and a big straight blade screw cover cap. This, when you're mastering the robot, is where the sensor goes in for the mastering unit. You actually screw a little sensor in there, and when that part on the axis moves by, it bumps this little thing right here. There, get you a good shot of it. So it comes along and it, it bumps in here. So you stick a probe in there and when it comes by you'll feel it bump back. And that's how they master the robot and know exactly where you are on each axis. So that's a special little thing. And here we'll, we'll put this up here with the other one for Matt. So now he has the whole set. What else do we got? That pretty much covers it. I got some nylock nuts. Now the nylock nuts have, it's, it's just a nut. Pretty much this kind has the, the spanner bang ring on it. And inside, you'll see that yellow thing. That's a nylon washer. And when you put this nut on, the washer digs into the bolt. Do I have a bolt that'll fit it? No, of course not. Of course not. That would make sense. Um, this digs into the bolt, and it holds on there really, really tight. And these are a bear to get off, but that's exactly what you want, is this to be a pain to get off. You put it in places where there's a lot of vibration or movement, and you don't want the bolt coming off. Aside from that, I just got a bucket full of metric nuts and bolts. So, and that is the end of Project Kevin. So there's all the nifty bits that you didn't get to see in the other videos. I want to thank all you guys for watching them, because now we've probably got like 20 videos in the series. And that's Project Kevin. So you guys have fun. Keep sending in your ideas for things to take apart and questions that you want to know. And there will be all kinds of discussion on this in our forums. If you want to learn more about this, go to thegeekgroup.org. Get in our forums. Get involved. Membership is free. And we're places for guys that want to come and explore this stuff. So thank you for watching. Please comment, rate, subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Have fun.